or welcome back to Loaded Landscapes. My name's Simon Plant and today we're going to be looking at repairing and removing objects from within our landscape pictures. So welcome back. So we all know that uh, occasionally we'll take a great picture uh, but there is something in it that really annoys us and we wished it wasn't there. Well obviously with Photoshop and Lightroom to a certain degree we can use some of the tools in there to help us um, repair or remove unwanted objects. We're going to start off, we're going to be working in Photoshop today. Lightroom is very good, it's got a lot of new tools in there, uh, well not new but uh, they've recently updated um, and and uh, they're pretty good, but they still have some limitations. So we're going to be using Photoshop today, and we're going to be using the clone stamp tool and some of the healing brushes. I'm going to show you some techniques that I use uh, on certain objects, depending on the image. Uh, some are more successful than others. Okay, so we're going to start off with this image. It's actually um, a digital image, but I've added quite a bit of noise and effects to it to uh, make it look um, a little bit more old school, I don't know if that's the right word, but um, I wanted that little bit of noise there. So we're going to use this as, a, as our, um, our demonstration image, and we're going to pretend that actually we don't want this guy walking along uh, the River Seine in Paris in our lovely picture, and we're going to try and clone him out using the clone stamp tool. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to add a new layer, and I'm going to select that and my background layer and just lock those together so they don't get uh, the, the, you don't knock anything and start moving things around so with the clone stamp tool there's a few settings we can look at in here we can go up to the uh, the source panel here and it uh, gives you some uh, so sort of, well quite a few settings but we're going to ignore most of them the one we're going to look at is this show overlay so with that ticked off we can press the alt or option key to select our source area so we want to try and um, if we're going to say for instance take out this dog let me just zoom out a little bit um, we want to obviously choose a source uh, for our cloning that's going to be very similar to where the dog's standing so press down the alt or option key to uh, sample and click and that's now sampled the area now with that tick, uh, that box unticked, you're going to see nothing. But if you tick it and you do the sample again, it's going to actually give you a little preview. You can probably just see that there. A little preview of how that's going to look. So that can be quite helpful. Um, there's not really many occasions I can think of where you want to turn that off. So I would leave that show overlay ticked on there. There's um, a couple another setting up here. Um, you can uh, select which layers you are, are uh, uh, sampling from. Uh, current layer, current and below, or all layers. I've only got two layers in here, so it's going to be current and below. This button here, if it's uh, turned on, off or or on, will turn. So if it's turned on, I should say, spell it out. If it's turned on, it's going to um, ignore any adjustment layer. So if you've got an adjustment layer on this, you can include that in the sampling. Again, um, it depends on the image. Generally, I'd probably have it turned off. So uh, that's another option there. And that's all we need to uh, really worry about at this stage. So we're going to just take this dog out. We're going to press the Alter Option key to choose a sample point and then just clone over that area. Uh, like so. So we made a pretty good job of there. Um, obviously it's only a little tiny part of the image. A uh, couple of things to watch out for when you're cloning. Uh, two things uh, that could bring to mind. Sometimes you can, you'll be cloning away and you'll get kind of a, a real kind of uh, a mushy appearance where it hasn't blended very well. Maybe your opacity is not strong enough and uh, you can get like a very kind of obvious patch. The other thing is is uh, your clone a cloning source. If you're cloning an area, um, you, sometimes you can uh, you can get repeating patterns and it's very obvious you know you've been cloning. This is where this align box up here. You'll see a little tick tick box and it says use same offset for each stroke. So let's show you what that means. If I'm cloning uh, here these little whatever they are bricks. Um, and I click and sample, and I maybe I'm sampling here, and I go down a bit further, and I sam and, and I do another shot there, uh, without resampling. It's kind of it's not repeating. If I untick that and I sample on this brick here, 
and I click there and that resampling I can click again and it's going to sample from the same area you see the crosshair there look so it's useful if you want to repeat something otherwise make sure that is turned uh, or ticked and turned on so uh, even with that ticked you still got to be very careful that you make sure that you keep moving your uh, your source uh, point for the cloning otherwise you can still get repeat patterns so let's just name this one dog so I know what I'm looking at um, another way uh, of uh, I like to work as well if it's larger areas sometimes rather than cloning and miss and, and, and obviously risk getting repeating patterns and not very getting a good transition sometimes I use a selection tool so let's take this guy out now the other thing is don't always try and do things in one go so let's let's just take the top half of this guy um, out of shot the other thing is take a larger area than you need because and it will come apparent in a minute because you need to blend this in so always come around and allow a little bit extra room so let's just get down as far as there and then I'm going to make sure my background is selected uh, and move the selection to a similar area if, you, if you've got one like so um, you can make sure you've got a bit of a feather I've got a one pixel feather there and I go command or control C to copy command or control V to paste get the move tool and we can now just nudge that in the right position and hopefully that's a fairly good match make sure that's lined up add a layer mask uh, get a brush tool foreground set to black remember white reveals black conceals and I want to conceal some of this adjustment and just lightly you can make sure your flows down a little bit if you want to um, and just lightly just blend that in okay if you go too far like there I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit just make sure press the X key make sure that the white's down in the foreground and just blend that in nicely like so so there's before, there's after, so far so good. Just gonna blend the bottom of there a little bit. Uh, again, whole, um, select the background layer, get a selection tool, like a lasso. Again, take more than you need and come down around there. And then we're gonna move the, uh, move the selection tool. We may well get a bit of the dog now come through. I'm not too worried about that. Command or Control C to copy, Command or Control V to paste, move tool, drag that across. Oh, yeah, we've got a bit of the dog there, but not a biggie, big problem. Somewhere like that, do add a layer mask, foreground set to black with a brush tool. Again, make sure the opacity there flows down, the opacity is down a little bit. I want to take out a dog there. Oops, and there you have it. And that's kind of nicely blended. I'm just going to merge those for after. So a little bit of a mark there. Again, you can you can then clean this up with the uh, clone stamp tool if you need be, like so. So there's another way of doing it. I quite like that way. I think it's got a little bit more control sometimes um, than using the clone stamp tool on its own. So uh, let's rename that one man not that it makes a lot of difference because we've probably now finished with this particular image so there's a couple of ideas of how you can use the clone stamp tool and selections and uh for, for certain images and which works i think really well so there's before there's after okay quick and fairly easy Okay, so we've got uh, another image now, and we're going to try and use the spot um, healing brush or the, and the patch tool. And uh, the diff big difference with these, years ago we had the obviously the clone stamp tool, and you that's really all you had to use. And you, after you've done your cloning, and, and it's still the case now, with some images, you, you if you clone an area, sometimes you need to go in and add a little bit of noise uh, and etc. just to kind of help it blend uh, and blend in better. 
where the uh, where the spot healing brush and the patch tool come into their own is that they will kind of blend all that for you or, or attempt to blend it. They don't always work very well at all. It really depends on the image. Now, I'm going to be honest, I pulled this image up just to show you how sometimes it doesn't work very well and actually it's doing a really good job. So, um, but, but just be aware that on some images, especially with images of high contrast uh, and edges, you can get like a real mushy blend when it doesn't blend very well so what we're going to do with this one I'm going to duplicate the backdrop I'm just going to show you um, and when this works it works a lot quicker than doing the cloning so it's always worth having a go you can sometimes you can make a selection and then go right click and you go to fill and sometimes uh, you could use the um, content aware uh, option there uh, and click OK and sometimes that works really well like there let me just deselect that that's not done a bad job it's not perfect you can see there's a bit of a line there so let me just backtrack a minute let's try that again because sometimes if you press the color ad adaptation that does a better job and that is uh, better better than it was so that's one option the other option is the patch tool where we just come in and click and drag and again, it'll try and uh, blend everything for you. It's doing a pretty good job at the moment. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So you get this funny edges sometimes, but they're, they're not an issue really to, uh, to resolve. Find a good source area. I'm trying to blend those in. And that's not bad either. As I said, I was expecting it to make a bit of a hash of this, and it actually did a very good job when I tried it earlier. But you never can tell. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Let's try to come a bit closer, I think, try and line these up. Not bad again. Let's just uh, take that bit again, and just try and get a better area for that. Not bad. Um, and then down here again don't try and do too much in one go pretty good again the reflection pretty good again pretty good it is a big area let's see if we can do this in one go it might not work very well again you have enough room to do it as well, enough area to clean from. Not so good there, but that's probably because of the uh, trying to take too big an area. This is why it's good to take smaller areas with this to blend. So I can't fault Photoshop for that, that's human error. So don't try and do too much in one go. Okay, so let's just back off there. It's not perfect, but it's pretty damn good before after and that has made a pretty good job of that I, I'm quite impressed I've got to say I didn't think that it would work very well on on this image and okay we can use the, um, the spot healing brush as well to go over any areas that are problematic but uh, that shows you how much quicker it is than using a clone uh, stamp tool and doing the selections like we did earlier so not bad at all as I said um, with some images it just doesn't work very well at all it's only when you come and give it a go uh, that you'll really know um, as I've proved to myself today as I said this didn't this image is going to work very well but I stand corrected anyway I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to catch you again on the next one cheers for watching mm -hmm.